Those motors are so tiny, look at that. And can you guys hear this? It honestly sounds like a very low tone, like bumblebee flying. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Check it out. It is the Mini 3 Pro review today. So finally the flight review. Green grass, finally. I'm in Hawaii here and it's been just crazy drought. This is the Fly More combo with three batteries. One is the normal battery, two are the extended batteries. This is going to be the initial flight test, go through all the function. See how this thing really works. I do have the advanced controller. I got my daughter Sonia that's going to volunteer to do some tracking with her see how the thing tracks, see if it hits any objects. So anyway, let's get started with the initial flight test. So the Flymore Combo comes with this cool bag. If you wanted to see the unboxing and kind of everything really close up, go ahead and check the link that'll pop up here. Also down in the description, I will have um, all of the stuff I'm reviewing as well as a lot of my gear and stuff and other videos down there, down below. Anyway, first thing out of the bag is the advanced controller. As you can see, it has a screen on it. This is an actual Android device here that they're using. We're just pulling out the sticks. These little sticks are tiny. They're getting tinier. Look how thin the, the actual shaft is on these uh, sticks. So you want to be make sure you don't cross thread and just make sure those are nice and tight. So controller is ready to go all set up and this thing actually does onboard recording guys. There is a slot down here, a little door that you can open up and it takes micro SD cards so I'll show you how to do that. You can swipe down, record your screen. Let's bring the drone out. Don't have any batteries in it yet, but there it is, the Mini 3 Pro. Just the tiny little thing. And the cool thing about this one, this version, is it doesn't matter which way you unfold the arms, top or bottom, they don't conflict at all. So you can do it any way you want. So we just wanna unfold all four. As you can see, the propellers are super loose, so you don't really need to spread them out. They're just gonna spin out when you start the drone up. Take off the gimbal cover, really nice and easy. There's our 4K 60 frames per second camera there. And since this thing has all kinds of sensors, um, make sure that you kind of clean them. So I always like to make sure I have a clean shirt or a clean, preferably like a lens cloth and clean everything before you kind of start this thing up, just so you, you're sure that all the sensors kind of work. This is the ultralight battery, which makes sure the drone is under 250 grams. You can see how it's 249 grams with this battery. These two higher capacity batteries that give it up to like 40 or 45 minutes of flight time, we're definitely gonna test this and also range test with these batteries. Make sure you check out that, see how far this thing goes and how the link quality is. So we're just gonna use the first flight battery that it comes with, the original lightweight one first. Just gonna insert it, make sure you hear, hear that kind of satisfying click and really the drone is ready to go, ready to power up. So I have updated twice. I updated once in my initial unboxing, and then I just updated it again before I came out to fly this. Click, click and hold. Let this thing turn on. Just kind of looking at the, the camera, the gimbal isn't really doing much. Just kind of going back and forth. Now this is the thing with this one. You see how it's like hitting? I have this kind of flight pad here. This launch pad, I think I want to boot that up again because the camera really hits the launch pad. I may even want to just boot it up in my hand here. Let me just show you what it does. Back and forth a little, down and straight up. So it's not really going through all the motions. That's kind of interesting. But anyway, that's the camera there. You can see it kind of taking out all that side to side, up and down motion stabilizing everything so we'll go ahead and face it this way set it down there turn on the controller it takes a little while because this is kind of like a smartphone without cell data you can connect it to your wi-fi at your house and do all the updating and stuff once this is green right here the controller has linked it has a sandisk card it sensed in it so i'm gonna go ahead and click setup and what it needs to do is just kind of format that card that's in here real quick and it's kind of ready to use. I wanted to swipe down and show you guys how to record. So hopefully it's not too glary. So you swipe down a couple times, you get this menu and then you just press screen record. You can also adjust your brightness here. I'm gonna turn the brightness all the way up and you got your, your volume as well. So there's a speaker out coming out of the controller. Anyway, screen recording. 
You hear a little chime. You got this right here on the bottom middle of the screen. It says it's recording. So there we go. I do want to go back into my storage because I kind of dismissed that. So I'm clicking on storage there. You see how it's a small amount of storage, 1.21. That's the built-in on the Mini 3 storage. So I want to switch to the SD card I just put in there just so we can record for a long time. So you got to make sure you click on that if you put an SD card in. 56 minutes versus one minute and nine seconds. Boy, 31 satellites you see up there. Hopefully you can kind of see my finger moving around on the screen with a little dot tracing my finger. Five to 10 coming from this direction, guys, is where the wind's coming from. I forgot my flag today, but um, you can probably hear a little bit in the mic and you're gonna see how this thing flies. So let's go ahead and start recording. Boom, just clicking record there. You can also do it from the buttons up here, record video, take pictures. And let's go ahead and launch. I have it in end mode, which is normal. And I'm just gonna use the screen right now to launch this little arrow right here I'm pressing on on the left of the screen and then we just hold to take off so let's see how this thing looks when we take off holding and then when you let go it'll start up the propellers this thing is quiet so Wi-Fi and Bluetooth automatically disabled oh great so it disabled it in this all-in-one controller so you have the best signal directly to the drone it's already kind of picking up, you know, it's sensing me as I walk into it. See that? Controller's kind of beeping. So even quieter than the Mini 2, guys. And just so you know, you can use the Mini 2 controller on the Mini 3. If you didn't want to buy the controller version, you just had a Mini 2 and you want to use your Mini 2 controller, you can do that. I'm not sure how it's going to be with the antennas because this has built-in antennas. We're going to do all that in the range test um, today is just about flying this thing right out of the box and seeing how it performs so as I was saying super duper quiet we're in normal mode I'm just gonna do a quick spin here I got my yaw all the way to the right you can see how slow that is cool and the sensors do seem to be working let's see if we walk in the back of it yeah, so you can hear the rear sensors come on, then you can see the graphic on the screen saying downward how close it is to the ground. That seems to be pretty accurate. Let's go ahead and lift it up a little, just make sure we have um, the most precision landing chance as possible. Now look at that horizon. The horizon's straight, guys. It's just that the hill is a steep mountain, so it's going down. And the way we can check that is by, if you look at the video, is by rotating and check out the cloud line and the ocean line over there right so we can make sure that that's straight you see the cloud line is straight so we know that the camera is straight all right let's come on down so i'm full stick down it's going like you know two feet how fast was that going let's do a full throttle up and see how fast six point seven miles per hour up let's go down full throttle on the stick coming down okay negative a little slower coming down five and then once it sees the ground it starts to slow down even though you're holding the stick so just great flight solid flight features and control that dj always usually has and with the three of course they're going to be upgrading it those motors are so tiny look at that and can you guys hear this? It honestly sounds like a very low toned, like bumblebee flying, like woo, just like super low toned. I'm just loving it. Let's walk around to the front. Hey guys, again, thanks for tuning in. Really appreciate you um, checking out my vids and uh, make sure you subscribe and like the video if you enjoy what I do. All right, let's continue on. The thing's beeping away because I'm in front of it. What is our flight time? It's saying I have 31 minutes left on the top right up here. If you look at where my finger's pointing. 85% um, battery, 32 satellites. That's unbelievable. And look how this thing sits. So it sits kind of at an angle facing up, but the camera is like perfectly level. And I'm assuming they're doing that because they're utilizing um, the, the forward and rear sensors on top to also look up a little bit higher than the drone. It has a sensor on the bottom, right? So it's gonna detect things. See how it's going up on its own there? 
So it doesn't really need um, those to look very bottom forward on these guys, so it's facing up. And I think that's what they're doing, why it's like so angled like that, is just so it gets more of a, as 360 as possible without sideward sensors, you know what I mean? And upward sensors. So just kind of spinning this thing around, it's just so quiet, man. Unbelievable. So let's start flying around. I know I'm talking about it a lot right now. Let's just start flying into the wind. So this is full stick forward. And uh, it's going about 20 miles per hour. And I'm just gonna keep it this height. And just, you know what I mean? Just keep going turning as hard as I can so very very steady wow I'm gonna bring it down a little and then just try to like see if it stops at me nice so I just use myself as, as an obstacle and look at that I'm holding it full stick forward it detected me and then slowly crept forward and then stopped it will not go closer than that looks like about four feet about three to four feet that's awesome, I'm still holding the stick directly forward and it just will not crash into me. I thought I did have it on bypass, but it doesn't seem to be bypassing. Let's go check that out real quick in the settings. Yeah, so see that? So it's not for some reason bypassing me. Um, will that only work maybe in cinema mode? Let me, I'm switching this switch over to the left to cinema mode. Let me press forward now. Okay, so no bypass. I guess they're not fully getting that to work yet. So let's try that again in Cine. If we hold forward. It's inching its way to the right, but it's not quite doing it. So something they may need to work on, guys, is getting that bypass to work on the Mini 3 Pro. All right, so that was in um, normal mode. We're kind of getting, you know, this. these are the speeds. Uh, it seemed like about 20 was the max. And just flying around, yeah, it's getting pretty close, but it's not crashing into me. I'll try that a couple more times. Full stick forward. Yeah, bypass is not working, okay? So it's just stopping even though I have it in bypass. I'm gonna try to hit, hit the screen again and try to go back and forth, back into bypass and see if possibly you know, it needs to um, just switch back into that mode. Still pushing into me, and yeah, it's, so it's not really bypassing. See, I was just stuck there. So maybe something they can work on there. Anyways, that's about it for flying. It seems really super stable. And let's go ahead and switch into sport mode. You see how it just stopped like that? Right when you let off the sticks, it stops perfectly fine. Let's switch into sport. So switching this button over to S right here. And let's go ahead and just go full stick up. Let's see how fast it gets going. 11 miles per hour going up. Nice, that's facing to the mountain. Let's go ahead and get a little bit of shot of the mountain here. A little bit cloudy today. And then let's pull full stick down. And it's going 11 miles per hour down. So those are the speeds in sport going up and down. Let's see what it does when it gets close. Yeah, so it goes fast. I'm still holding down. It starts to get really slow when it gets closer to the ground. So let's leave it kind of close to the ground right here and go just full stick forward. See if it runs into the ground or anything. Woo! Man, that was quick, wasn't it? Boy, and it stops pretty quick. Now remember, when you put in the sport, the sensors are going off, right? So no obstacle avoidance anymore. Full stick forward coming at us. Whoa! <laughs> yeah, that's quick, man. That's just insanely fast. I'm gonna fly it out here for a bit. Just gonna do kind of a manual orbit. Full stick to the right, orbiting. Let's just see how fast we can orbit. So this is just a manual orbit. Awesome. Woo! 
All right, gonna go straight out that way in sport, crosswind, kind of. Let's see how fast we can get going. Thirty miles per hour, just about twenty nine point eight thirty. Yeah, so 30 and a crosswind. I'm going to pull this stick directly back. Check out that view out there, guys. And, of course, your time is going to fluctuate when you're really hauling, right? You see the time fluctuate there near the circle with the power. Whew. It seems like it's doing really good at, like, stopping itself when I let off the sticks. Did you guys see that? Look at this thing. So a 30 mile per hour sport flyer. I want to do a quick little stop for you when I bring it back here. We'll bring it low. Letting off now. Man, that's so quiet. So it took about 20 feet to stop in full speed sport. So just keep that in mind. It does stop quick though. Still have 57% power left, man. They have really refined these things to be super quiet. Just every time they release one, it just starts handling better and better. So what we'll do is we'll go switch into cine mode. So this is back to the C on the stick. And our sensors came back on, you can hear it. Now look at this, actually I didn't, let me switch back into sport. I didn't do a full yaw spin in sport. So that's the speed there in sport. Just that makes everything a little faster. I'm gonna switch while I'm holding the stick to N and real time it's slowing down and then to C cine mode cinematic and that's how slow that thing goes just you're not getting like, like that shaky video and stuff right almost forgot to mention that this is your gimbal up and down so if you see me kind of rotating this wow it's got a high oh my gosh wait a minute dude this thing can shoot almost 90 degree um vertical that looks about like i want to say 70 ish oh my gosh see that camera there that's really high up and then of course pushing the gimbal roller the other way cine mode really slows the gimbal down you can see how slow it's going and it's going to go all the way down to the grass let's see how fast it does in cine mode and we'll do kind of a punch up here while we're in the full down on the camera, pushing all the way up. See you later. <laughs> uh, we're going 4.3 miles per hour, guys. A little bit of crosswind. So four and a half going up. Let's do a little yaw while we're while we're going up. A little effect here. Cool. You know we're just at the park, so nothing major to see. All right, let's come down. That was 4.5 going up. And coming down, we're just about three. So it looks like it's always slower coming down. Just full down on the stick here in cine mode. 3.4 miles per hour, depending on the wind. Awesome, man. So I'll be switching between the cam, of course, on the drone, guys, and my screen, right? So you can kind of get the best of both worlds. I'm gonna switch back into, actually, just pull the camera up here if you want to do a quick camera deal um, watch this there's these buttons on the back of the controller right here I'm gonna do C1 you saw how that just pulled it up parallel real quick so you can assign these buttons however you want in the options so C1 clicking watch the camera straight down C1 again level so those are some quick actions there. C2, I think I just have it as the map. Or maybe nothing. I haven't assigned that one yet, I guess. Okay. But with this cam too, it's pretty cool. You can click on the screen. So if you wanted to focus more on something, like I'm clicking on myself here. You see how it's coming into like super focus? And then say I click off in the background, like on that um, baseball dugout back there clicked on it and it's trying to bring that more in focus. So it has like a really good camera on this thing. Let's see how fast it is in cine mode, just going straight. Remember we have all the sensors on and stuff. So this is just full speed, speed forward, excuse me. 
I'm going to do a slow turn. Nice. So for cinematic shots, look how close to the ground I'm getting. This is as close as I can get. It seemed to kind of slow itself down. And let's come on back. Sorry about the overcast nature of the day, but... It's like going five to six, this close to the ground. Oh, once I straighten out, it's going up to like nine. Let's see if I go a little higher here and not go over this house. Let's see how fast it gets going in cine mode. So it's like we have a maximum speed of like 13 in cine mode. Okay, that should be kind of crosswind right there, with that wind I have. Let's back it up. Remember, we can rotate that camera like, geez, that seems like, um, oh, there's the degree right there. It's actually 60. If you look over at the right hand, let me get, let me turn it to the, more of the dark part of the clouds. Whoops, I just let off and it did that. So there's a dark part of the clouds. You see the, um, the little degree measurement there? It's at 60 right over here. I'm tapping on it. So 60 degree up is as high as you can go. That's pretty awesome. I'm gonna click that button again, the C1 on the left, remember I was talking about? It goes down first and then click it again right back to level. So quick little um, getting your camera in um, different angles with that C1 button. Awesome, let's see what our flight time is now. Um, let's get back over here to us. 10 and a half minutes, we're at 36%. So that's kind of all I wanted to do with this battery is really just run through the normal manual flying functions and then we're gonna get to like different camera, different quick shots and tracking in the next battery. So I think we got really got, um, you know, a feel for it in these three modes and just kind of flying it manually. It's, so, it's awesome because it just will not hit the ground, right, when it's um, moving. I still have my stick pulled all the way down. That's as low as we can go to the ground. So I'm just going to do this one more time in cine mode. That could be a really neat shot, guys, if you're flying over something. And, you know, a lot of people like to get these neat um, kind of fast-moving low shots. Pretty awesome. Looks like maybe it's kind of seeing the ground. Let's see if I go straight towards me. The bypass is not working. Hmm. I switched it on. See how it's just sitting right there. So note to self, guys. They need to do some updates. And this is the second update I've already done on it. So hopefully all those quick shots and other stuff is, is working when we try to track in a second. Gonna go back to normal mode and um, let's just get up here since we do have like 30% left. I guess I'm gonna do a little bit of the camera. Oh wow, what kind of bird is that up there? Let's see if we can see that in the camera, guys. Hmm. I just saw a bird with my own eyes, but I can't see it really with the drone. I'm gonna stop recording just for a sec on the drone, so I just clicked the record on the screen. And now I'm gonna click this little video clip button on top and switch to photo. Okay. And then just kind of click away from the screen. You can click single shot, um, 48 megapixel, super, the high, super high resolution, AEB, burst shots, and time shots. So you can select all those. I'm just gonna be doing some single shots what I do want to do though is I don't want it in this four by three format. Is it up here? Let's try go into the camera options. There we go. 16 by nine. That's what I want. I'm just gonna leave everything in auto. See all these options I've got on the screen, guys. Switch between internal and SD card here as well. Cash while recording, all this stuff. So just click away from that onto the, like the video over here on the left, and that goes away. So you see how now it is 16 by nine, so it's like full screen. So for this, I'm just gonna take a couple of photos and I'm gonna just click this button on the controller. You see how it's taking photos and you hear the but you hear the sound. Let's see if I was to click the video. 
So it switches over the video and then you press it again to record. Let's just try that. Great. So a little bit of a, a record clip there for you just to show you how that worked. Clicking again. Let's see if we click on photo now. So you can't do anything until you stop recording, which is clicking the record button again. Then you can press camera, switches over to camera, and then click it again, take your camera shot. So at least you can just do between the two buttons, you know what I mean? Check this out, guys. You can do profile shots. Look at that. So the camera on the drone actually turned, and now we can do um, shots in more of like a profile view, right? So I don't know why you'd want to do this. Maybe let's try tilt this can we tilt the gimbal oh cool so i want to get that house out of the way but i wanted to get also the mountain and the shoreline over there so let's try a picture like this i'll have that up on the screen and it's auto enhancing the quality there's also a zoom over here if you look at the 1.0 on the right side check that out you can do some zooming so i'm using the gimbal again while i'm I can do one to two times zoom in photo. So let's take another picture. Low battery return to home. I'm gonna cancel that because I'm close. Let's take another photo in this portrait mode. Switch out of portrait mode. See how the camera just um, turned on its own. I'm in two times zoom. So it looks like you can do like um, one and two times zoom on this. You see that? I'm just hitting that zoom button. I'm not sure if there's like any other way to do the zooming because this doesn't really have a function button like the, the Mini 2 had. So for now, that's all we're gonna get. Looks like in the photo mode. And it wants to return to home. So I think I'm gonna do a return to home now. So let's fly out here. Let's go back into video mode and start recording again. I'm just gonna go out so it can return to home. Okay, so I'm out here. I'm gonna hit the home button here on the left side. Let's hold it in. Yeah, remember you gotta hold that thing in. Hopefully it doesn't just try to land there. We got three minutes left of flight time, 3.30, and we're at 13% power. So let's see how close it lands to that H, even in low power mode. The uh, bind light on the controller started to flash red, so that's an indicator that it is getting pretty darn low. We'll try some more, some more settings um, once we put the new battery in, and we'll try all those tracking features and all that stuff. So let me try to rotate the camera down. I just want to see if it'll pick it up at a certain height. I just kind of have it pointing at the grass. Yeah, so it automatically picks it up. And it looks like it's not really landing perfectly on the H. I would have thought it would um, really be using those cameras down below. I didn't do a compass cal, so maybe I'll do one before the next flight and then we'll do a return to home on that second battery and see if it gets a little bit better precision. Because you would think that this would be with all the high tech stuff on these now with the camera on the bottom and all that stuff and the software, it would be super accurate nowadays so i'm recording on the screen you want to stop your recording we've been recording for 26 minutes and about 30 seconds pressing stop okay and then now i'm in hat cam mode guys uh so you got to check out the screen from my hat cam swiping down you get the little menu there swipe down again you can watch your video that you recorded in the device right here or you can delete it from here. What I'm gonna be doing when I do this video and I'm editing it for you guys to watch is I'm gonna be pulling out the card, putting it into my laptop and downloading that file so I can have it up while I'm editing. And remember, this is kind of like an Android phone with no buttons on the screen. So you can swipe the bottom like this, bottom right. And that's kind of like a back arrow. Pretty amazing screen, it looks good. I even have my sunglasses on and I usually can't see the screen, but in this high brightness, I can see it even with my sunglasses on, although it's not very sunny today. It is kind of overcast. So anyway, that's where it landed about a foot away from where we took off. 
let me slap in another battery um we're really at like eight percent it seemed like it flew for maybe like 25 minutes but i'll have that exact time come up on the screen here so we took care of like some of the camera functions and all of the manual flight functions so in the new battery that's going to be the higher capacity battery we'll go ahead and take care of all the tracking the quick shots, uh, maybe some more camera functions, more in depth. So the fly more combo, you got all kinds of flight time with those three batteries. All right guys, um, got the high capacity battery. Now remember these ones are supposed to fly for like up to 45 minutes, I think DJ says, but these bring your drone over 250 grams. So keep in mind if you're worried about that, um, that these are heavier batteries. So putting in a fully charged guy here, booting the thing back up and we're gonna do a compass cal we'll do compass and calibrate so here we go so let's try it out press start rotate 360 degrees I usually like to kind of go up away from everything and it's saying to kind of rotate it counterclockwise so let's just do this counterclockwise until that goes away face up counterclockwise looking at the screen while I'm doing it okay keep going until that goes away so that's it let's see how fast that compass calibration was really nothing to it this time let's try to do the same kind of launch because remember we're trying to see if how precision it can be so I don't want to make it any different really than how we launched the first time by just doing the auto screen launch so now that we did a compass cal, let's see how accurate it is when we return to home for the second time. I am going to pick it up, um, you know, just like before, right around 30 feet. Let it hover there for a second. And then we'll start um, tracking. So, so now you want to come up here and let's start the tracking and stuff. I think that's enough time to hover. So I'm in normal mode, guys. We're just going to leave it in normal. And I'm moving the camera kind of down. Now there's a setting in the settings. You can have it highlight people already if you wanted to. You know how like before in some of my reviews, once you have a person in the shot, it kind of like starts highlighting them automatically. I have that turned off. So I don't know if, if that's important to you. You can turn it on in the settings if you want. But in this case, look at what we're gonna do here. We're gonna just click on say Sonaya. That's focusing, but what we want to do is click and drag, I believe. And unable to focus in current recording format. Okay, so they haven't taken care of the 4K60 no tracking issue. So we're gonna stop recording. You'll see what I'm doing on the screen here. Bottom of the screen, res and FPS. I'm clicking on it. I just want to go all the way down the line just in case, just from my own knowledge, I want to make sure so we're in 4K 50. I want to see if I can track in this mode. Nope. 48. Nope. And finally, we're going to try 30. Once that goes away so I can see it. There you go. So this should be the one that it can track in. Let's just make sure. Tap in the screen. Drawing a box around Sonaya. There we go. Okay, so it gives you another little tutorial on tracking, right? So it kind of tells you what it's going to do. I'm going to skip it and don't show again. So show it if you want to learn how to do that, but I'm going to go through it with you guys. We're in spotlight mode. So why don't you just do a light jog, just maybe go out about 20 feet and then do a circle jog around me. Go, go for it. And we're going to start recording. Okay, now turn left and do a circle. So remember, it's no a circle around me like this. Yeah. Just start right there and just start jogging around in a circle. You understand? <laughs> okay. A little bit farther out. Just keep going, but just make try to make the circle bigger. There you go. So this is spotlight mode where the drone just stays still and it's just moving around to turning its head to track. You see how it's getting a little bit hard to follow her okay that's good for now Sonia. let's do active track 
Then we can do trace or parallel. Let's do trace, go. Look at that, we have, we're 86%, we still have 38 minutes of flight time. So I didn't even look at it when it was 100% guys, but look at that time it thinks it has left. So there's an efficient flight speed, right? If it's moving a little, it'd be even more efficient than, stand, than sitting there and hovering. Oh, that was weird. The drone just moved by itself. Oh, because it thinks you're moving. You ready? Okay, so run around as however you want, back and forth. You know, do a couple of moves to try to lose it. Just start off slow, however you want. Go for it. Your own path. Okay, guys, so remember this is regular follow active track. And I'm just kind of leaving it at this height of 17 and distance of like, well, it's saying the distance from its home point, but from her, that looks like about 30 feet. So we'll let her do what she wants to do. I'm gonna bring it down tonight and you go through that goal post, okay? Go right through the goal. All right, it's going around me. Let's see if it, oh man, woo! It noticed it and it kept tracking her, great. Yeah, I can pull the stick back. See, I'm pulling the stick back and just kind of adjusting my position in the air. Um, if you go too far back, of course, it's gonna lose the subject, right? So there's probably like a bit of a limitation. So go ahead and um, just sprint for like five seconds, turn around as fast as you can, sprint back right there. Whenever you're ready. There she goes, sprinting. Let's see if this thing can follow her. Oh, nice. Hey, they've improved it. Can you stay in the same line though? Like sprint like this, like this and that, and then boom, same line right back, okay? Go for it. Wait, 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 let me get behind you again. So you guys, you can move this around while it's tracking the subject. See how I'm moving it in the air? And you can position however you want, okay? So let's just do that. I wanna kinda of keep it the same as it was. Okay, whenever you're ready. Super fast sprint, same line, just turn right back around and be on that same line, okay? Is it gonna do it? Oh man, they still, it still has trouble. Okay, it went out of tracking mode. So they still need to kind of improve that, you know, if they can just speed up the drone to keep up with somebody that's juking around, that would be kind of the ultimate. Because if you're doing, that's the problem with this and doing sports, right? If you're doing sports and you got fast moving objects, it's gonna do that, it's gonna lose people. Let's try to go back in circle Sanaya again. So I'm just drawing a box around her. Remember, you gotta be in 4K30 for this to work. We did spotlight. Let's track the other, try the other active track, the parallel. Obstacle avoidance unavailable in parallel because it doesn't have those side sensors, remember? So Sanaya, just go ahead and just, just do a light slow jog to the other side of the park and a slow jog back. Okay guys, tracking Sanaya, slow jog. Parallel, oh shoot. Wait, hold up. <whistles> Come back. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot to start it. Right there's good, stop. My bad, honey. Parallel, go. Okay, now go for it. Go ahead. Okay, so now guys, it's gonna, it's gonna stay in its um, kind of angle of the subject and follow, okay? This is parallel. Now remember, all obstacles off, even if it's facing a little forward, so be careful with this. So let's see if we can move it while it's doing this. I'll wait till she kind of turns around. And you see how it's trying to keep that angle even though she turned around? That's pretty darn awesome, but remember, no freaking obstacle avoidance. So it will just run right into something if it's there's a tree. 
Let me see if I can move the drone around a little. Yeah, so you can move the drone sideways, up and down, and position it wherever you want while you're while it's doing that parallel. So that's awesome. Thanks, Anaya. The sun's coming out now. That's cool. So we'll press stop right there. And now let's do a point of interest. We did spotlight. We did both active tracks. Let's do POI. And we'll go maybe a little higher. Remember, you got to click on it or it doesn't know what's going on. We'll do a fast POI. Go. So let's see how fast this is. That's a pretty fast one. Okay, go ahead and do that same run. Just the slow jog. Whenever you're ready. Go for it. It's just going to be orbiting you. So guys, this is like an orbit follow, right? You see how it's tracking her while she's running and it's orbiting her. And again, all obstacle avoidance is off. So don't even try to do this. I want to pick this up because it might hit the tree. Okay, still orbiting her. Now I can't change anything until I press stop. You see how it's like locked in? Oh, actually I can. I'm gonna go the other way. Sorry, I take that back. So I just move the arrow the other way and I'm pulling back on it. So I'm getting some more distance on the stick. Subject too far. So do you see that pop up? So there is limitations and that's why um, this is not a good sports tracking drone unless you're tracking close up and not having crazy fast movements, remember? So look at that point of interest track. I mean, that's what it's really good at. These things are super smooth doing this stuff. And I take that back. I was mentioning I can't adjust it, but you can. It just kind of grays out once you let go. But you can adjust your speed on the fly while you're doing those um, active tracks. So look at that. So Sonia sat down and it can't see really her body shape anymore because it's trained to track like human forms. Um, and so once in a while when it loses it, it just goes into its last known like GPS point. It's still doing okay though. You see, it's, it's kind of like trying to figure out what it's tracking. So now can we do that one more time, kind of walking through or jogging through the goalpost? I want to get it right up at that post level. Should be right about there. I want to do active track and I want to do trace. But what might happen is it might wait for her to pass. So go ahead, do that jogging that I, the instructions if possible, hon. Just go slow. Wow, it actually kept her in view on that one. Let's see what it does. Whoa, okay, good. It avoided that, avoided the fence. Now she's gonna turn around and do it again. All right, they're getting a little better at not losing the subject. That's good. Let's see what happens this way. Don't hit that board. Okay. Great. Great job, Sanaya. So it did great on that. And that's what I was wondering about. It's still using those back sensors, but it's only going to active track going forward, right? The parallel would be the only way you could get it to lock on while it's going backwards. And they shut all the sensors off for that. So be careful with that. That's not even gonna work. I'm gonna swipe to the left here and go back into, just remember, I didn't update this battery after the firmware was updated. So you see that up on the top left? I was updating the firmware with a different battery. So remember to take full advantage of all the updates and the efficiency for the batteries too. Do those updates, whenever you do an update of the drone, put each battery in and do an update for the battery too because you can see how that needs an update for the battery. So we're probably not even gonna get as efficient as it should be with this battery. Still at 53% though, that's awesome. And it's still in that tracking mode, which is kind of frustrating. Um, hit spotlight again, okay, so that that went out of it. I'm gonna stop recording on the camera and we can't go into the quick shots until we stop recording. And then let's just try a master shot 
you know, I usually do this. It just does like this series of quick shots, right? So let's see what it can do. And I'm just gonna draw a box around Sonia. Actually, it already detected her. So you see that little cross? I just clicked on her. Subject released. Okay, just try to stay standing straight up, all right? You saw how when she bent down, it kind of lost her. So this is the master shots, and we're going to start off kind of close. That looks like as close as I can go. I'm pushing forward. It's not coming forward. Let's start. Set the route perimeters. Okay, flight time, two minutes. Medium, see how all this is default here on the bottom? Um, width, length, height, start point. So we'll just leave it all how it is. It looks like we can adjust that. We'll just leave it at that and start. Hearing a countdown. And it looks like it just kind of plopped the point. It didn't really keep tracking the subject. You saw how it's just now it just dropped the GPS point. So this wouldn't be good for if you're moving around doing all these kind of shots. So as you can see, it was pulling out. Now it's doing a medium circle. It's doing a circle as it's coming in, zooming in. It's actually using a zoom function. That's interesting. Okay. Doing a droney where it's pulling out and going back while it's doing this. We'll just let it do its thing. So it looks like they may have changed that where before when it would do the master shots, um, I think I remember it doing a circle far, far right now, pitch up and forward. I thought I remembered it trying to remember the subject while it was doing this, but it's just using a GPS log point. Pitch up and fly forward, cool. And the sensors are still on, the obstacle sensor, so that's good. It looks like it may be able to avoid obstacles while it's doing that. See on the top right, those two little up and down signal icons are white. Down circle, cool. So the master shots just goes through all of these things, guys. Straight ahead and descend. So again, we're up on a slope mountain, so that's why you're seeing the the view is so skewed there, going down. Down and descend. Hey, let's see how close it gets. Master shot complete, and it's going back to where it started. Great. And it stops. Okay, we're in master shots. Let's go to quick shots. So quick shots are kind of the same thing that master shots can do, but you're just doing like individuals, right? Let's go ahead and click on Sonaya. And let's start the droney. Three, two, so three, two, one. <laughs> let's wave, Sonaya. Come on. Give it, give it a smile. Let's have a smile. <laughs> okay, so there's the droney. So you see how it's just kind of doing the same things that um, we did before. In the master shots, but you can control them individually. And it's coming right back to where it left off. So it's gonna get pretty close, but it's great because it has those sensors anyway, right? So then we can click up here on the droney and we can uh, go to different things like rocket, etc circle let's try a helix so all these are pretty self-explanatory let's click on sonaya again and try helix so you see how you can change the settings here see 80 meters all the way up to wow you can go all the way up to 360 meters and then the lowest is 40 meters Let's try a 120 meter. And you can pick the direction, see, left or right, and start. Three, two, one. And it's just gonna go up and circle out for 120 meters. 
So you can get these kind of cool shots. It looks like the sensors are on if you look at the top right, kind of next to the satellites and where that RC signal is. The sensors are still on, so I guess it's going to still try to detect something uh, if it runs into it. You know what I mean? If it thinks it's going to run into it. So that's good. At least it's leaving the sensors on. I remember in a couple things like parallel, it just turned them all the way off. So, so it does, it does the um, selection and then it's just coming straight back. See this? It did the helix come straight back. Okay. We can click on the helix over there. We can, let's try a boomerang. Boomerangs are kind of cool. Oh, they brought back the asteroid too. See the asteroid on the bottom? Let's try a boomerang. So we'll click on Sonaya. Looks like you cannot adjust the distances on boomerang. You can just select the direction. So hopefully maybe they'll get a little bit better with updates. So I'm flying in as close as I can. And I'm pretty press start. Can't move the camera because it's just locked on her. So let's see how this does. Cool. It looks like it's not getting too confused. And that's a boomerang. It just goes out that far and comes back. Wow, it got close. Let's get that thing away from us. That was awesome though. So that's the boomerang guys. And then um, let's just try an asteroid. This would be kind of cool. So tap or draw a box around the subject. Looks like you can't adjust here either on the asteroid. Let's just go ahead and do a start. Two, Counting down. And there is your asteroid. So what it's going to do, it's going to pull out. It's going to stop the video and then it's going to take like 360 degree photos of its surroundings. And it's gonna tie it all into kind of an asteroid uh, video that you can just pull out. See how it's taking these patches of photos? And then it's gonna stitch them all together and it's gonna give you that 360 degree spherical effect combined with the video. So we'll just let it do its thing. You can see that the percentage is ticking away on the right around the red dot for recording. So there we go. So it finished stitching it all together and now it's just gonna return. Pretty awesome. It looked like it went about 150 feet. I didn't see any um, adjustments you could do on that. So it looks like 150 feet is all you're gonna get for the asteroid. So right back where it started, then you want to make sure you let it finish, right? Awesome. Move that out of the way. So I think that's kind of like everything I wanted to do. Maybe we'll take a few panel shots up here. Okay. So thanks, Sonia, for the help. Been a big help with the tracking. Really appreciate that. I think that's enough tracking. I might do some stuff um, running through the trees when there's not maybe as much people up here at the park, just in case it hits a tree. But for this initial video, it's gonna be long enough, right? <laughs> so let's go up here and try to do some pano shots, guys. It's always cool to get um, pano shots, right? Let's just bring it sky high. We only have 22% left and then we'll finish up this review just doing a return to home after we do those these pano shots, all right? Um, so let's just go ahead and get it up here up to its height limit that I have it set at I think like 393. So let's just get it up here so we can get some cool shots of Maui. Okay. Maximum reached. And let's see what we can do. Okay, so we can do a sphere. Check this out. We have all these options here. I just left this open while I was ascending and apparently you can do that. So I'm on the sphere. I'm just gonna click, take the picture. 
All right. So this is Maui, guys. It's taking uh, spherical pictures. And then same thing like the asteroid, it's going to stitch them all together and you know give you a 360 degree picture and then you can export that and use it however you want right low battery return to home cancel you see that how it wanted to do that so you can cancel that just be careful if you're far out away from you you're good so we'll let it do its thing Looks like this is gonna take a little longer because it's getting an entire 360 degree um, stitch shot of very high resolution images. You can see it processing there over on the, the right, 80% now, 97 and 100%. So that's how you do the sphere. Um, you, can adjust the, you can adjust the format. See how it's set, telling us this is JPEG. You can also do raw. Cool, huh? So you have all those options. Clicking on the sphere again, we can do a 180. It's getting low. Let's go ahead and do a 180 shot. I'll be having these things pop up as it does the shots. And this is what I wanted to see if we could turn the volume down on this. Let me let it finish this. 180 shot. Kind of irritating, I know. So this is a 180. It's taking quite a few shots because it's kind of like half of a 360, right? Okay, and it's gonna process those. I don't wanna do anything until it finishes processing, but I did wanna go down and try to turn down the volume on the controller. Come on, let's go 80%. Let's go process, process. Let's see if we can do this. Turn down volume. Nope, that does not affect, guys, the low, the low um, power beep, okay? Wide angle, let's just try that real quick, boom. Should just be a few pictures. It's just what I'm doing is I'm going down the line and it's just making a smaller and smaller picture, right guys? If you can imagine. 360 to 180 to wide to like regular size, right? So it just took less pictures and it's stitching them together now. You know what I mean? So we only have four minutes left to fly. 10%, hurry up. <laughs> critically low okay I'm actually gonna just fly out a bit oh it just wants to land okay well I don't want to fly out a bit I want to get it over us okay well I botched the return to home guys on that one I waited until it was too low taking photos so you see what I did? I switched the camera down so I can look at the FPV and kind of, since it's just going to force land, I'm just going to land it as manually as possible. Okay. Sorry about that. Botched the um, return to home landing. So I'm just manually kind of controlling it. I'm going to get it right over the landing pad as good as possible and let it land. I think what I wanna do, I know this is a long video, but I wanna give it one more chance at the return to home. I'm gonna put in that third battery, shoot it up, go out a ways, and just a return to home, and then we'll do a pros and cons. All right, guys, let's do this one more time. We're at 99% with that new third battery. That's the great thing about the Flymore combo is you get so many batteries. Let's go ahead and stand back here and give it a slow ascension. Again, the <laughs> camera is level. Okay, 30 feet, let it hover there for a second. It may have gotten confused because I was in the way, so I'm gonna back off a little bit here and I'm gonna have it hopefully land sideways just like it was. So just go straight out here. 
switch into sport mode give it some dang fast flight kind of going into the wind right here but um, let's just pitch the camera down while we're flying how awesome is that huh remember we're doing a range test coming up here in the next video so hang in there and subscribe guys if you want to see how far this thing can go Ooh, there's some wind out there so I'm gonna stop here I'm gonna hold in this button for return to home, go home until it says go home and let's let it just come on back remember it's gonna ascend or go up into the altitude that you set it to return to home at in the settings so you see how it's going up I think I have it set to 100 feet so that's why it's going up I can still adjust the camera let's see if I can move the head can't move the head back and forth but I can adjust the camera okay so let's let that thing come on back and see how close it lands remember the first uh, return to home was a foot away from that launch pad so I'm hoping this will be a little better it's coming home at 23.5 miles per hour so apparently it thinks Possibly that that is the most efficient speed to come back at. I'm going to get out of the way so it has like no reason to avoid me and mess up its precision point. I think the backpack and Sanaya should be okay there because they're about five or more feet away from the landing pad. Coming on down. I'm not even going to touch the gimbal either or anything at all hands totally off man it's not even adjusting itself for that launch pad really it's just landing on the side where it thinks it wants to land interesting it's just a foot off again even with that remember we did that compass calibration and everything so I don't know maybe it's because I'm here in Hawaii or maybe they need to update some stuff on it but I'm still getting a little bit of off on um, the mini series where I'm located here. So let's stop the screen recording on that awesome controller. And let's talk about the pros and cons on this thing, guys. What did we think about it? I mean, it doesn't have the side sensors. It's like, that's the only thing missing now from the mini series, right? If it had those side sensors, you could do like the parallel with obstacle avoidance. Of course, the parallel is what you would do that active track parallel and just have it at the reverse angle of the subject so here's the person running it would just follow and go backwards but it turns that all off in parallel even though it has these sensors kind of pointing up and back right so that's something they need to kind of either update or put some side sensors they're probably going to wait till the mini 4 pro right to put the side sensors on and that's usually what these guys do man these motors are so tiny and it seemed to handle that wind pretty well. I noticed I was kind of hitting some wind farther out there when we were doing that last flight for the return to home. And it looked like it slowed down a lot when it was hitting some wind out there. So you may want to be careful with this one in the wind. Um, we are going to do the range test. So we're going to see hopefully on a super calm day how it is. I may do a high winds test too. But other than that, they're really getting better at the fit and finish, um, really smoothing out the flight characteristics. Amazing flyer, just so smooth, so stable. Couldn't really ask for more on the video. It really does great. Of course, in overcast, you saw it, how it's kind of doing in overcast and that's how this park is right now. Improvements in the 4K30 and 4K60. You guys be the judge of how those videos were up. I'll have had them up throughout the flight. So go ahead and comment down in the description. Remember, it can only you can only track at the highest in 4K30. Um, but at least you don't have to, it didn't seem like you had to switch the quick shots um, to 4K. Hopefully those were, <laughs> those were in 4K already. I remember in the last mini, you had to switch it in the quick shots as well to get the, the 4K footage. But anyway, the, the sound, man, they're making them super quiet now this is even quieter than the mini 2 the mini 2 sounded like still like a little mosquito this is like just a little barely audible bumblebee man just amazing doing great with the audio perception um the noise level the annoying noise level is not there anymore the flight time on that second battery i'll have had them all up so first battery seemed to be about 25 or so minutes 
second battery it seemed to be maybe about 35 and that was just doing all these options not really doing a consistent flight speed like how they test it at the labs in dji not really realistic so at least in a video like this you're getting like how long they can actually fly with the wind conditions it's still only about five to ten blowing from this direction on the left coming in this way but anyway guys i hope you like that don't forget links down in the description for the products i review here as well as all my gear i've got the drone launch pads my cameras all my stuff microphones down there down below in the description so you can get and check that stuff out if you want to anyways thanks for tuning in and don't miss the range test so subscribe See you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your help, though. Yeah. Two high fives.